It's Kitchen Courses with Kate and Eric. Hi, ladies. Mm. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Hey, Eric. What's going on? Becca is back to join us for Kitchen Courses. Oh my gosh, what did we make this time? Woo! Today we made a, a red Thai curry. And again, with Asian cooking, the reason I love it is because of its flexibility. So today we made a Thai red curry that has chicken in it. Going forward, if you are, have vegetarian gas or you're a vegetarian, you can replace that with tofu, for instance. Um, sometimes I cut up Japanese eggplant and include that instead, um, or I do everything. So again, the versatility of Asian cooking. So I think the one thing that really, that you were remarking about in terms of preparing this dish is just having everything kind of cut up and prepared ahead of time. Yes. Because once you start, it comes together pretty quickly. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of the F is the preparation. There's an enormous amount of preparation. Well, first there's the hunt for the Asian food and hopefully you have a great Asian market where you can buy these things. Um, and once you have all of your ingredients, it's really about preparing them into the correct sizes and dimensions and then once you've got everything set up it's just a matter of just adding it to the pot slowly but surely. What was the process in terms of like the layering of the flavors in doing the curry? So today we started out with coconut milk and we added a red curry to that and it's really important to simmer your coconut milk and the red curry for quite a while because you want to release those flavors before you add additional ingredients. I think there's a tendency, certainly in North American cooking, where we sort of throw everything into a pot or a crock pot and it cooks all at once. So this is, that's a great mm -hmm. word for this, a great mm -hmm. descriptor of layering your flavors. Um, once that's done, with the protein that I added, and this would be chicken or tofu if you choose, again, adding that in and letting that settle some in the liquid to absorb those flavors, it gives it more of a rich dimension to the, to the dish that you're making. Um, and so, Prep time is probably 40 minutes, cooking time is 20 minutes, but a lot of that 20 minutes of cooking time is just waiting for the flavors mm -hmm. to sort of come out. Yep. And we want to get our rice going at some point while we're cooking, depending Correct. on what kind of rice we're cooking, right. because if we're making instant rice, <laughs> please don't or make minute it. rice. <laughs> don't make, please don't make instant rice. <laughs> So what kind of rice so did you today we with? used a jasmine Thai rice, and that again just sort of adds this dimension of flavor to it. Any kind of rice is fine. A plain rice would be fine. In in some respects, the rice adds um, the the rice helps to to cut the flavor of it if it's too spicy for guests or whoever you're inviting mm -hmm. to, have to to eat. Um, and so it sort of serves your that enemies. purpose. <laughs> your enemies. <laughs> So it serves that purpose. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes this dish can come out a bit liquidy, again, depending on the ingredients that you use, and the rice serves to sort of absorb that as well. Mm -hmm. But so. you made, like, the thing that impressed me the most about this curry was you just, it was like so unctuous, like there was just, it was so... There's you, a lot going on. There was a lot going on, <laughs> but it was also, you kept like the curry, it didn't become watery, and so it stayed, like that coconut flavor was just really, it was right there, and then the curry paste that you used um, just that layering and then okay. kefir lime I just I'm giving a shout out to the kefir lime leaves because I've never cooked with kefir lime and I feel like that makes like all the difference that is a piece of resistance of the dish um, and it's very important with kefir lime I think to, to chop it up to release some of the essence of that into the dish just throwing the leaf in doesn't do the same as cutting mm -hmm. it up mm -hmm. um, and do you have to cook that down then at all I don't so generally, oftentimes the recipe calls for it to be thrown in at the very end. I don't do that. I throw it in before t about 10 minutes before the recipe is supposed okay. to be complete. Yep. Again, to release some of those flavors and to soften the leaves. Okay, because kefir lime isn't like cilantro or parsley. Like it is a, it's a, it's a much... It's a waxy, yeah. hard yep. leaf, yep. basically. And so yes. you want to make sure that breaks down a little bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What did you think of the pineapple? It's probably my favorite part of the whole thing. Seriously? <laughs> I fucking love pineapple. Really? Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Well, and I. Does that make you sad that my no, favorite part I'm of the just, pineapple? No, I'm stunned. I think that's terrific. Yeah. Yes. I think that the pineapple added this great, again, the sweet note to the spicy, right? You were kind of making it the difference between adding kind of there's coconut sugar and palm sugar that's typically added. Like, right. which one did you add? I used coconut sugar. 
Recipe, these recipes often calls, call for palm sugar, but I prefer coconut sugar because A, it's easier to find, and B, it comes in these very cute chubby little discs, and they dissolve rather quickly into the dish. And so today's dish, which was quite a vat, I used one and a half of these. Um, and it just gives it, again, a nice, very nice essence that's not super sugary sweet, but it balances the spice and it balances the red pepper, for instance, which can be rather acidic. Mm -hmm. So, And when you were talking about red curry, you use the red curry paste, right? So Correct. it comes in a little tin. In a tiny little tin. You can you get, can get, get it anywhere. Yeah, you can get it at the grocery red store. tin tin. Um, and as I mentioned as I was making this, I generally sort of spitball this recipe because you need to be tasting as you go. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes if you have just a can of coconut and yep. that tiny can tin of the red paste, it's, yeah. it's considerably more spicy than you would expect. Yep. So you need to play around with it. Keep an extra can of coconut milk aside mm -hmm. <laughs> in mm -hmm. case you need to add that to, to soften those spices. Yeah. And I think having, you know, having tried doing some Thai curries in the past, I, I, I've cheated. Like I use brown sugar instead of the coconut sugar or palm, palm sugar. I don't do the kefir lime. And, you know, having Becca come and join us to cook, cooking today, it just showed me that I need to kind of make the investment in the time and just go and get the products that really make that the flavor profile so rich in a Thai curry dish. It was delicious. It was totally delicious. It was so, so good. Like everything we make here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it was particularly delicious. Yeah. So thank Let's you. you thank you so much thank for you. coming on and joining us. Thank you. Yeah. And are we, we should have more guest stars. Maybe next time. <laughs> well, not next time, next time. Maybe in a couple episodes. Okay. Yeah. And you're welcome to join us anytime. <gasps> So please make Becca's the Thai curry because you'll just you're gonna love it and it tastes so good. Little round thing like that, and then scrumptious, and just a little. Whoop! That might be a little heavy on that, but I love cilantro. Voila. Do you want to give us the 30 second elevator oh, yeah. pitch version of the work that you do that is so amazing and important? So when I'm not cooking up a storm, <laughs> well, I run a program at the VA, in particular the Phoenix VA, mm -hmm. and it is under the purview of narrative medicine. And what we do is we interview veterans who are interested and ask them to tell us their life stories. The purpose of that is to inform their care providers what's most important to them. Um, and we found anecdotally that this is a huge boost to care providers because they remember what they went into medicine for, mm -hmm. but it's also a boost for our veterans because they feel listened to and heard. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes they will tell us things that they don't tell their care providers, especially when we're talking about palliative care of patients. And so that's what I do. That's pretty when I'm amazing. Not yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you.